let's talk about eight critical retirement mistakes you can avoid. Number one, not having a cash flow plan. Retirement is all about cash flow, not your net worth. Without cash flow, you don't actually have a retirement. It is your income that will determine your lifestyle in retirement. Now that you're retiring, what you have accumulated needs to support your income needs for the remainder of your life. Spending too much in the early years or experiencing significant losses in the early years could result in you running out of money before you run out of time. The second mistake is not having a budget. Many high net worth or high income earners have never lived on a budget. Because their wages are high, they have just lived comfortably and been able to save along the way. However, when you retire, you no longer have earned income. Now what you have saved needs to provide for you. To create a good cash flow plan in retirement, you need to have a good handle on how much money you spend every month and year. Underestimating your budget could throw off all your planning calculations when creating your retirement plan. The more accurate your budget, the better your cash flow plan. I've used and recommended Mint.com as a tool to help you know where your money is going. When it comes to living on your budget, I prefer the old-fashioned envelope system. Benjamin Franklin wrote, A small leak will sink a great ship. So please, create a budget before you retire and practice sticking to it. The third mistake is not maximizing Social Security. For many people, Social Security retirement income will represent 40% or more of their guaranteed retirement income. Social Security is tax-advantaged income. It's inflation-adjusted and has spousal and survivor benefits, which need to be considered. A poor choice when starting Social Security could result in $100,000 or more of lost benefits and could be the difference between having enough money to last the rest of your life or running out of money too soon. The fourth mistake is having debt. To quote the Bible, the borrower is slave to the lender. If you envision retirement as a time of freedom, travel, spending time with loved ones, or service to others, then having debt may hinder your dreams and your sense of confidence. I found the most successful retirees pay cash when buying used cars. They pay off credit cards every month and only justify using them at all as a means of accumulating travel rewards. Moreover, in the best situations, they have already paid off their mortgage. The fifth mistake is assuming unrealistic stock market rates of return. Since 1926, the stock market, as measured by the S&P 500, has averaged annualized returns of a little more than 10%. The key to these returns is time. Over shorter periods of time, the stock market can trade sideways or negatively. Assuming constant rates of return of 7-10% to 10 may make your retirement numbers look good, but may not be realistic given your time horizon. If you are thinking of buying stocks today, you should take into consideration that the S&P 500 looks expensive relative to history when using price to earnings on a cyclically adjusted basis. Robert Schiller is a Nobel Prize winning economist who is well known for this CAPE ratio. This fundamental inflation adjusted means of valuing the stock market has the S&P 500 with a CAPE score higher than 27, where the median over the past 130 years has been closer to 16. There have only been three times in the last 130 years where stocks have been more expensive. With yields on 10-year treasuries yielding less than 2%, I'd say bonds are looking expensive on a historical basis. When making assumptions about future rates of return, I like to say, let's hope for the best, but plan for the worst. To be safe, I'd recommend only assuming a 4% rate of return on your at-risk assets when constructing your retirement plan. The sixth mistake is not planning for long-term health care costs. Most people will be eligible for Medicare when they turn 65, and many will choose to purchase a supplemental policy to cover the 20% of health care costs that Medicare does not cover. However, according to Steve Brown, a local long-term care insurance agent, less than 9% of people in the United States have insurance for long-term care health costs, which are not covered by Medicare or supplemental plans. These are the type of health care costs that don't kill you, but require you to need some assistance for an extended period of time. They can be brought on by stroke, heart attack, cancer, dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, MS, and the list goes on. According to Genworth's website, a recent study shows that 70% of people over 65 years old will need some type of support over their lifetime. In Washington state, the average monthly cost for a private nursing home room was $8,500 per month. 
Many people I've met don't want to believe that any of these things could happen to them. They point to their good eating habits, healthy lifestyle choices, and family history and argue that they will never end up needing assistance. While it's certainly not fun to think that our health could change and we could lose our independence, not planning for this type of health care expense could significantly strain, if not completely wipe out, a retirement plan, and worse, may lead to adult children having to consider becoming caregivers. There's an old saying that goes, one mama can take care of eight babies, but eight babies can't take care of one mama. The seventh mistake is not planning for inflation. Ask anyone who retired on a fixed pension 20 years ago about inflation and you will get an earful. Over the last 100 years, inflation has averaged 3.3% as measured by the CPI, and over the last 10 years has averaged 2.3%. The Federal Reserve has an inflation target of 2% over the medium term. When planning for your future income needs, be sure that you are taking into consideration the fact that your dollars will purchase less in the future than they do today. Therefore, create a plan that assumes you will need more dollars to maintain your lifestyle needs in the future years. Mistake number eight is not having a plan for when one spouse dies. Oftentimes, with married couples, one person manages the household and one person manages the finances. Unfortunately, when the spouse who manages the finances passes away or experiences a significant health event, the well spouse can be left in a fog of uncertainty about what they should do, where things are, and what should happen next. Not only do you need to make sure the surviving spouse will have enough income to maintain their lifestyle, but the surviving spouse needs to be able to have the confidence to continue to carry on the plan that was originally created. To learn more about how to successfully navigate retirement, please visit us at soundretirementplanning.com. Here, you can look at the Sound Retirement Planning Blueprint to see what a plan ought to look like. Moreover, you can use our free Social Security Income Calculator. We hope these tools will be useful to you and help provide you with a greater sense of confidence, clarity, and freedom.